gamers no longer want to listen to long guides. So here are 25 quick tips, guaranteed swifter than a Nimbus 2000. For that one of a kind MMO FPS, Planet Side 2. Watch out Golden Snitch, here we come. One, if you face overwhelming odds in the air and don't want to die with your ESF intact, nosedive to the closest player made base and get under that umbrella shield. Two, when at a silo that is open publicly or to your squad, make sure to check how much power is left and not to take too many construction items. Leeching all of the power will leave your base pretty much defenseless. Three, you can set the silo to squad, platoon or faction only accessible on the Q menu screen, so you can block trolls or clueless leeches. Four, once you see that hive start to burn, run! However, do stop at a safe distance and watch the hilarious mass extinction of your allies. Five, as a fighter you can hover underneath the biolab landing pad to resupply rather than on top where an ESF with stealth could sneak up on you and one clip you with rotaries. Six, building a hive that you cannot defend or keep active isn't a good idea. If your allies capture an enemy core, yours may be the most efficient and become active and simply be a free core for enemies to take back. 7. You can redeploy whilst in the loading screen, so when you are redeploy hopping across bases to get to your desired location, it will speed things up, especially if you don't have a solid state drive. 8. Get angry or frustrated at the game? Take a break. Seriously, if you're worked up, you have less concentration and it will only get worse from there. 9. There is now a H symbol to indicate when you're in hover mode. That's the H symbol for anyone who struggles with my pronunciation. 10. Make sure you engage enemies in your preferred range of your weapon. For example, if you're in a biolab building as an NC with a default goal saw LMG, you don't want to be near doorways or corners close to enemies because you will lose to faster firing weapons as they get into your face. You want to give yourself some distance and time to aim for their heads. 11. The ESFs have all been given engagement radar default which spots and tracks enemy aircraft. So if you play with high damage rotary nose guns, the stealth radar may be your best bet as it stops you from being auto spotted. 12. Running away is an important part of the game. If you see hundreds of enemies crossing a field toward you, try to run to any cover possible so you at least have some advantage. 13. When you are flying to dogfight other aircraft, fly at maximum altitude possible. It will give you the best view to see other aircraft first, you will be flying above most flak and you will be able to engage aircraft directly from above where their surface area is largest and the easiest to hit, especially the scythe pancakes and reaver bricks. 14. When playing through the first 15 battle ranks, you get 100 certs per level. If you get to 15 and realise you didn't cert what you really wanted to, it would be better in the long run to delete that character and to start again. The first 15 battle ranks are done in no time and it will be faster once you are more experienced. 15. Under fire by enemy tanks? Need to emergency repair but can't find cover? Well, go fast backwards with your tank and the momentum will keep it moving. And you'll try and repair it whilst it is moving and basically it'll be harder to hit for the enemies. 16. Bodies, grenades, ammo boxes and other items used actually block bullets. Occasionally you will kill somebody and you want to aim for the person behind them. Make sure to move to the side to get a view past their corpse. 17. If enemies are spawning from thin air, they are probably coming from an invisible cloaked Sundra. So if you are a heavy, try to hit it with your rocket launcher to make it visible and a target for your allies. This might mean some guesswork. 18. You can resupply your ESFs at Sundras with ammo resupply and can be closer than landing pads. Just be sure not to splat dramatically into the ground or become a sitting duck for a lockdown prowler shell. 19. If you're a solo player, you'll have the most impact at smaller fights, and these may feel more rewarding than being an extra body against an enemy zerg. 20. If enemies are concentrated in a tight building, as an infiltrator you can usually take mines, run in past enemies cloaked and get lots of explosive kills. Cheesy, but fun. 21. A tank gunner should always be looking down for tank mines on the ground when on roads, especially out of combat as the rendering can be a little haphazard, and it could save you from becoming a 70 ton oven. 22. Med kits may be Araxis heroin, but on the light assault, 2C4 instead can turn you into a monstrous fairy. With two packs you destroy main battle tanks, one killing most maxes without flak, 
and also being able to kill grouped enemies. Paired with the health regen implant, you can still have some way to keep going for normal kill streaks. 23. Camo in the game has mixed effects. If you wear an actual camouflage, you'll be more likely to get killed by allies and enemies alike. If you wear an over the top colour camo, I'm looking at you pink camo, you'll be a shoot me please symbol. However, default camo will make most people think you're a noob and may underestimate your skills, which can give you the upper hand. 24. If you have a mouse with sensitivity buttons, you can negate the effects of concussion grenades by increasing your sensitivity when you are hit by them. It is still wonky but can help you aim. 25. If you see somebody struggling in the game and you've been a bastard to everyone else all day, it could be your time to regain karma. Give them a tell, invite them to your squad, and be sure to explain how to respond back to your chat. It might just be they become your best friend later in life. The internet and real life are much more blurred now after all. I hope these tips were fast enough for you all and have been useful. I hope you won't be hopping onto the Hogwarts Express out of here, and thank you to all of those who put tips in the comment section of the last episode. If you have any you think I've missed in the series, be sure to put them in the comments below. If you thought this video was wise like Dumbledore, give it a like. If you thought it was dumb as Goyle, give it a dislike. Subscribe for the next episode and more goodness. Thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, Joshino.